Hey guys, it's Chris with Nichols Retirement Empire. Today I'm doing a voiceover. I visited Wormslow, which is a colonial state here uh, just south of Savannah that was established in 1736. So I'm going to take you guys on the tour and show you some things as I was able to walk around. Now there is a museum in the visitor center and it shows the information, historical information about the Spanish and their role here in Georgia, how they were the early settlers, and it shows some of the archaeological information. The estate here was established by a man named Jane, by a man named Noble Jones, and uh, the colony of Georgia was founded by James Oglethorpe. So this gives some information about that, and this estate was 500 acres. Uh, the man that eventually owned it uh, had kind of a mission here that he was supposed to carry out to help protect Savannah and uh, that kind of thing. There's James Elthorpe, picture of him, George's founder. And there's a lot of historical information here that shows the importance of this estate and why it was here. And it shows some of the information about the original colony and how that they had to change a lot of the rules and things people were unsatisfied with the original colony when they moved here um, there are uh, there were you know maps like this that shows where Skidaway Island and uh, Wilmington Island and then where Savannah is how far it is away from the ocean it's up the Savannah River so it was in a place where it could be protected so that's where all this is located so this estate was set up uh, in defense of Savannah. And then they have a gift shop where you can get all kind of different little doodads and things. It's a very nice little gift shop in the visitor center. Now, uh, these this is the outside of the visitor center. Those are the restrooms. And I will say that I was surprised to find that the restrooms were air conditioned. I've never been in a state park where the restrooms were air conditioned. Now this is where you park. I'm going to show you guys this outside of this sidewalk. And what's really nice about Wormslow is all the parking is shaded. That's where the cars are out there. And as you come into the visitor center here and you go to the right to pay in that through that door. That's where I was here a minute ago. And it's $10. Now I have a state pass, state park pass, and a state historic site pass. It's about $80, $85, but I can go into anyone in the, in the state of Georgia at any time and park for free and see the exhibits for free. And the um, this is part of the trail. And what's really nice about this, there's nothing else back here, so you can hear the insects and the birds and everything. And, uh, you know, you get a good idea of what the, you know, what it looked like, you know, back in the, in the early 1700s and what they would have had to live through and what they would have had to do to establish a state like this. Now, what they did is they built, this is, uh, it looks like a really, really big house. But the walls that you see standing there were actually the walls that surrounded the courtyard. And then the house was inside. The house wasn't really very big. Uh, as a matter of fact, when I looked at it, when I first walked up, I thought, well, this is a good-sized house. And then when I saw where the house actually was, I'm like, well, that's like the size of my swimming pool. <laughs> you, know, you can see that the house made up a very small portion of the whole tabby uh, structure here. Now, tabby is made from lime and oyster shells, I believe, and sand. And so they're taking stuff from, you know, from the environment there that they can build. And it's pretty much like concrete, uh, basically. And you would, you, you would work with it like concrete. So uh, they have this little rail around it. You're not supposed to go out there and touch the walls or, you know, mess with the side or anything like that. And uh, this, the family, the Jones family, has held that estate, uh, this portion of it, until the 1970s, where they, I think they sold it to the state of Georgia. 
but right out of the back you can go back here and there's a marsh um, and out way past the marsh out there there's an island at the very you can barely see it out there and that's where they had a, um, a company of Marines that Noble Jones the original owner uh, basically commanded and they were supposed to help protect Savannah from invasion because uh, the Spanish had, uh, had not been long gone from Georgia and as a matter of fact they did have some altercations with the Spanish while he was trying to establish his uh, his house. Here's an old cedar tree that overlooks the marsh out there behind where the house was and that was the uh, burial plot for the family. It didn't look like anybody else used it but uh, maybe the first owner. There's a good picture of the house. It says it was uh, in, in uh, 1736 when he got the, the property. And then eventually uh, he was able to own the property and not just lease it. And they have a couple of uh, you know little piers you can kind of go out on and look out across the marsh. The, real, the water was really, really high on this day. And uh, as you walk the trail, what it does, it takes you in a circle, and it's about a 30-minute walk. And so you can kind of see, you know, a lot of things. I saw I saw a deer. Uh, there's alligators there. There's all kind of stuff that you could potentially see. Then they have one section of the trail where they show you like a little historic, um, you know, house kind of a thing here. And it has a, a blacksmith. Uh, area here and they have a lot of the tools that, that blacksmiths would have used as an essential job at that point in time. And you can see the bellows right there to the right and uh, it's kind of crazy to think how much effort it would take to sit there and pump those bellows to keep that fire hot enough. So I mean they had to do it all. They had to work the metal, uh, tend the fire, make sure it was hot enough. You know I mean that was a physical hard uh, laborious job to be a blacksmith and really to do anything back then. There's a kiln uh, that shows you how they can make pottery, that kind of thing. Because you have to realize anything they got that was that was produced uh, in a factory or anything came from Europe, came from England. You know, they, they didn't have stuff here uh, unless you got it shipped down from Boston or somewhere like that. And this house is a little bit different kind of structure. I think they called it Waddle and um, I can't think of the other name for it. But basically it's sticks woven together like what it shows right there with um, clay and stuff like that to make a wall. And you can see they have some of it unfinished so you can see the way it looks. This is the front of the house and you can see one of the main things they would have to make sure they had was wood uh, to be able to... to heat the home even though it doesn't get very cold in Savannah but um, to have a fire you know to cook and things like that you can see the size uh, once you get in there it's not very big of course and um, you get a good idea of how something like this would have been constructed and um, a waddle and dab house a waddle and daub house that's what they call it um, and you can see how that wall there that's a good example of that and then they had up in the, the attic they had like their bed, bedroom, and uh, again, you can see, not very big, very simple. Of course, it had a dirt floor, uh, things like that. Now that section was on the battery trail. I went on the battery trail, which was an extra two, about two and a half miles, and that shows a earthworks fort uh, that was set up by the Confederacy overlooking the river there. And there's nothing left to it. Like I'm showing you where it is, but really there's just like humps on the ground. Uh, you really have to kind of stare at it to tell where you know the the fort was so again it was just made from dirt um, and it, you can see it overlooked this river and there was a, of course a battle for Savannah during the, the Civil War and um, Savannah was the only city major city from Atlanta to Savannah that was not burned uh, that's why in Savannah you can see so much 
of the uh, colonial building and, and antebellum building that you uh, don't get to see in the other parts of, of the state. And that was like a little, in, uh, I guess, a Indian or Native American kind of a hut thing that they really didn't have any description of what that was. Um, this section shows like the kind of crops that they would have grown and this was a pretty nice little deal because it really did show you know not the kind of corn that we have today uh, and not the kind of squash and things like that a lot of the stuff we have are, are you know modified and, and there are different varieties of stuff this shows the native flowers and the native things that they may have grown <clears throat> in the garden and of course again you know, these people, you know, in a place like this had to grow all their own food, had to uh, process all their own meat, everything they got. They had to be self-sustaining uh, for an estate like this and, you know, have, have enough for everybody that worked. Uh, so all these things were very, very important. And I don't know, they didn't really talk about how many people worked there or how many, you know, if they had slaves, I'm sure they, they did. Uh, they didn't talk about, uh, there are a lot of things, you know, historically that it didn't tell on the trail. Um, but as far as being able to walk around and see some of these things, it was a nice uh, little, little walk. Now, you, you need to be prepared to walk. It's going to be, at the minimum, a 30, 40 minute walk. And, um, you know, obviously it's, it's Savannah, Georgia. It's hot. And, um, you need to be prepared for bugs and things like that and, and have water and that kind of thing. So it's not too bad of a walk, but uh, it is a walk. So just make sure you, you understand that. And they had a couple of other trails that were much longer. I think they had one trail, the one that I went on, that was like 2.3 miles a loop. And then there was another trail that went all the way around that I think was like 9 miles or something crazy. I didn't go on that one. But uh, there's some okra and corn and things like that. You can see the things, they have black eyed peas. And then you come out of the trail to the back. And in the back, this is where the bus is parked. And again, everything was shaded. The trail was shaded. So uh, it was a very nice, very nice visit and a reasonable price, I felt. And this is exiting the gates. Thanks for watching Nichols Retirement Empire, guys.